It seems like lately the news has been filled with dog attack stories or stories about dogs killing people. And so that's what I wanted to go into today. I want to look at the dog attack statistics and what they really mean. So let's go over it next. Let's get this week's episode going. Hey, everybody. I am Jake from On Dog Training Academy, and welcome to the Learn, Laugh, Bark podcast, where we basically are just going to be talking about anything and everything dog-related. So on this week's episode, what I wanted to touch on was uh, an article that I read from Forbes, and it was from October 2nd of this year, and it's go- it's breaking down the 2023 to date uh, dog attack statistics. Now it does say by breed and yeah, we'll definitely look at that because I think it's good to take a real honest look at maybe what breeds are most of the attacks and bites and incidences happening from happening from and maybe some of those will surprise you. So I wanted to kind of go over this, talk about it and then, you know, if you're listening to this and you have your own feelings about it, own experiences about it, feel free to comment uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube, definitely feel free to comment on just the, the video itself. If you're listening to this on just any other podcast, if you're not able to comment, jump over to our, our uh, either the Learn, Laugh, Bark Facebook page or our On Dog Training Academy Facebook page and and leave a comment there, you know, and, and just let me know what you think about this because I think it's really interesting. And I think it's really, really important to understand these statistics because when I started to research wanting to do this episode – I was almost looking at it with the mentality that dog attack statistics or dog attack incidences have been on the incline. And actually, once I started looking at the numbers, I realized they're slightly on a decline. But fatal attacks and stuff are definitely still very high. And I mean, any attack at any level is too high. So we just need to to talk about it some. And, and I'm going to be reading this article. I read it, pretty much read most of it. And then I'm like, okay, I want to I want to talk with you guys about it. So we're going to be reading through this together. Again, I'm going to put a link to this in the description. Um, But this is an article from Forbes, October 2nd, 2023. And basically, the, the start of this says, Dog attacks can be frightening and can cause devastating injuries, of course. While any dog can bite, some breeds tend to have a much higher rate of aggression incidents, aggressive incidences, Uh, than others these dog attack statistics by breed shed light on which animals may present a greater danger and i mean there's a lot of things that are going to go into these statistics for sure um but we'll kind of dive in as we go through all of these uh just as we're reading i'm going to be reading some of the notes that they have in here and i think they're really interesting uh the first one says every year an estimated 4.5 million people are bitten by dogs in the united states Think about that, 4.5 million people. And here's the interesting thing that I, I kind of think about when I see these reportings. Okay, 4.5 million people. These are the documented cases of dogs biting people. So these are incidences that are severe enough to have to go to the hospital, have to go to uh, uh, call the police, something like that where a report is going to be filed so that the statistics or the data can be obviously entered and, and kept track of. But think how many times, like I've been bitten by a countless amount of dogs and I've never reported a dog for biting me. And if, you know, if I had to go to the doctor or something like that, they've never really pushed me to divulge, you know, how the accident happened or what happened. And as a dog trainer, you get bit sometimes, things happen. But so it's 4.5 million, but we can basically assume that's probably significantly higher based off of the fact that not everybody's going to report incidences as they happen. So, um, it's basically saying, you know, it's not a small problem. It's actually a big problem. And I would definitely agree Four four point five million people is a big problem. Um, well, some of these bites may be nothing more than minor nips and estimated 800,000 people each year must seek medical attention after a bite. Hospital bills can be very expensive and the ER visits could be, could necessitate a lawsuit 
in order to recover monetary compensation for, for damages. I actually have a friend of mine who is going through that right now. Uh, she got attacked by, by a, a neighbor dog and, and it's, it's an ongoing thing, but so this is interesting. So it's saying that an estimated 800,000 people each year must seek medical attention. So now I'm trying to try to figure out how they're getting this data, right? Like how'd they get 4.5 million? It's not like everybody's reporting. So is this an estimate? You know, it, it, I guess it does say an estimated 4.5. So I'm wondering how they're getting these numbers. But for sure, 800,000 people each year must seek medical attention after a bite. And if you've ever been bitten by a dog, you understand it's not just like, well, you, you put some stitches in it and whatever. Dog bite, dog saliva can lead to infection, can be awfully nasty. Um, you know, obviously it's saying uh, most common types of injuries following a dog bite were punctures or injuries to the arms and hands. Well, of course, because whether it's people approaching a dog, and I've seen videos of this lately, um, people approaching dogs that shouldn't be approached and trying to touch them and the dog biting them in the hand or the arm or the dog lunging up and wanting to bite them and you putting your arm up in the way to protect your face or neck. I've my, my own mother had to do that. She had a Rottweiler jump up and try to attack her by biting her in the neck, and she stuck her, her uh, arm up, and the dog took a pretty nasty chunk out of her arm. Um, so the, a lot of defensive wounds is kind of what I'm reading from this. But with that being said, you know, it could be other types. Uh, dog bites have decreased over the last few decades, which, again, comes kind of as a surprise to me. Because when I was researching this article, when I was sort of researching this topic, I figured because personally from what I've seen, I'm seeing a lot of people who are ma- amphiphomorphizing dogs and making them be more like people and treating them more like people which means they're hugging on them, they're cuddling with them, and not every dog wants that. And I find that people are respecting dogs as a dog less than they maybe used to. You know, back in the day, people, you know, that dog's a farm dog, that dog's doing whatever, we're going to give it space. Now everybody wants to be involved in everything and want to pet that dog and do all that stuff. And then with social media and all the crap that you see out there with people doing with their pets, like they're like, oh, bark at your dog or scream at your dog and see what the reaction is and video it. Well, Yeah, people are getting bit from doing stupid stuff like that. So I'm surprised they're decreasing, but it's a pleasant surprise. I think maybe that means people are educating themselves more. People are understanding the value in in training, especially as a puppy. They're understanding that puppy training is super important. That's And this is just a a shameless plug, but that is one of the reasons why we created our course, Welcome Home, is we wanted to give people – a head start on what they're going to need to do right away when they get when they get a puppy because it is so critical to your dog's entire life. You can't have a dog just live a super sheltered life for its puppyhood and then bring it out and be like, okay, go be social now. And I don't care what breed it is. You just can't do that and most of the time have success. It just doesn't work. So we push, whether you're getting into physical classes, whether you're taking online courses like ours, getting out there and doing stuff. And I think that is resonating with people more and more they're understanding there's a value in it they're starting to maybe not believe the people they talk to that might be going oh i grew up with dogs i can help you train that thing it just isn't as valuable anymore thankfully so people are seeking out professionals i think more um it says over 5300 postal workers were attacked by dogs in 2022 so it looks like they kind of let on to make this article seem like it was uh, statistics from 2023 but it looks like they're also referencing 22 which is fine it's going to give us a very close probably uh, a snapshot of what's going on um you know it's while while a dog biting a postal worker may seem like a, a a cliche the reality is the stereotype is grounded in reality um in 2022 alone more than 5300 postal workers were victims of dog attacks dogs often view mail carriers as intruders in their personal space and may engage in aggressive behavior with the goal of defending their territory. And this, this drives me crazy to a degree because it's not like male people show up randomly whenever it's not like UPS, but even UPS, FedEx, Amazon, when they're delivering stuff, typically, you know, okay, I, I, I have something coming and you, they'll even let you know it's estimated to be delivered today. Okay. Well, I'm going to put my dog away, but with a postal with, with, with like a mailman, like they come every day. You should know this, and you should be able to put your dog in a situation that's not going to lead to the post post person, whatever you call him now, the, the mailman, getting bit or 
or, or, or possibly then leading to a lawsuit or your dog having to get euthanized or you having to buy expensive ass insurance because your dog has now been deemed as dangerous and the restrictions that go along with life with that dog after that, it's so nasty and people don't realize it until they're in it. So take this as a public announcement. Take this as a warning. If you have a dog that's potentially dangerous, protect that dog by managing it very well. Because I don't want you to have to put your dog down because of a stupid slip up. Because you let your dog be loose and the male person walked up or something like that happened. Like, be really careful and mindful. Because honestly, I think those things could be 5,300 people getting bit, male people getting bit. That's ridiculous. It should not have to happen. Like, why? Unless it's a dog who's like a stray dog that runs up and bites them. But I guarantee most of those are male person walks up to the door, goes to put the mail in, dog's laying up on the porch, and then the dog just loses their mind. Hey, I used to deliver pizzas when I was younger. I've had dogs just chilling on the porch. You walk up to deliver pizza, and that dog rushes out to get you. I have been in those situations, and I don't think the pizza survived. I'm pretty sure I ended up dropping it or it fell or something happened. But nonetheless, be smart, people. Be smart. Um, so now it looks like uh, 50 or 50. 15.55% of dog bites were committed by stray dogs rather than pets. Now, okay, so this is an interesting statistic. Stray dogs rather than pets. So what is those what is that what's happening with that? Right? What's happening? Is it people trying to catch a stray dog or is it a stray dog just running up and biting? Those are two very different uh situations. If you're trying to catch a stray dog and the stray dog bites you, to some degree, you sort of deserve in that dog's world. You deserve to be bit because he's trying to he or she's trying to protect themselves, and they see me, they 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 deem you as dangerous and want to want to just get rid of that situation. So I could see that actually being. I, I wouldn't blame the dog. You know, obviously we have good intentions. We want to get the dog, maybe rescue them, or, or 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 make sure that everything's okay. But to that dog, if it's a stray it doesn't probably want to be caught and it seems it deems you as, as dangerous. Um, so that's very, very interesting. Um, so now we're going to dive into the dog attack statistics by breed. Many dog advocates argue that there is no such thing as a bad breed, only bad owners, which I could agree with to a degree. Um, still, it can be helpful to understand which breeds of dogs are most commonly involved in bite instance instances and acts of aggression. Dog attacks by breed statistics are invaluable both for individuals looking for a dog to adopt as well as those who interact with animals who want to minimize risk. Adopt or buy. Like, I, I'm this article is very adoption heavy, which is fine. I'm all for adoption, but I'm going to say too, if you're looking to pick out a puppy, it's really good to understand the breed. And that can be very confusing depending on who you talk to. You know, um, this... It, 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 to me, this won't come as a surprise, but to some it might, this next little bit. Dog breed that commits the most attacks overall. Can you guess? Can you guess what dog breed commits the most attacks overall? I could give you a second, but I don't really know how long to wait as I'm sitting here talking by myself. Um, I'll tell you, it's pit bulls. And, that, and I'm not here to bash any breed i am reading statistics um but we need that to be something people are aware of sometimes when people get into rescue and they do certain things and, and whether it's a golden retriever rescue or a basset hound rescue or a pit bull rescue they're very passionate about their breed and terms like nanny dog um come get get thrown around when it comes to pit bulls but we need to understand there's a side of them that can lead to more bite instances now again like i mentioned a little bit before sometimes just the the people who own these type of dogs or the, what these dogs can be used for can lead to dogs more bite instances too of course and i'm not naive to that so but it is saying pit bulls are both more likely to inv be involved in bite instance instances and more likely to cause serious injury or death um, when a bite does occur. In fact, from two, from 1979 to 1998, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention determined pit bulls were involved 
in the most fatal dog attacks, accounting for 28% of deaths due to dog bites during that same time period. So 28% of, of, of deaths were caused by pit bulls. Now, that was 1979 to 1998. Maybe dog fighting was bigger back then, which of course led to more aggressive dogs, whatever. Um, pit bulls may present a larger danger than other breeds. Main reason, such as because they have been bred to be more aggressive, are less likely to back down during fights and are less likely to give warnings before bites. And I can agree to a lot of that. Like there's been a lot of dogs that we've dealt with that with, with pit bulls or pit bull mixes that, you know, when they get into fights, there's just a certain edge to them. That's a little bit, not great. Now, again, People can label these nanny dogs. And maybe initially, I'm going to say I'm naive to, to the history of the breed, you know, as a whole. Someone who's very into pit bulls probably could tell me something different. However, I have a feeling that early on, early stages of pit bulls, maybe they were nanny dogs. Maybe they were the sweetest things. Because I honestly, I honestly think that, you know, pit bulls are extremely sweet and extremely smart. However, because of what they had started to become used for, fighting, uh, guard dog stuff, whatever, personal protection, they started breeding in this edge or maybe bringing out this edge that was already there, but bringing it out and exposing it even more. So now this dog that used to be an awesome nanny breed is now less of that. Now, no, I'm not saying every pit bull's aggressive. That is would be a stupid thing to say. It's just not the case. I've dealt with so many that are just awesome. Pit bulls, pit bull mixes, everything. They are, they, there are some really awesome ones out there. But we need to understand that as a whole, these dogs do account for a lot of attacks and bites. And it's because it's a little bit more in their nature than some of the other breeds. Now, with that being said, I, just because... I, I called out the pit bull in this article. I'll also state that uh, German Shepherds were number two. Huskies were number three. Uh, looks like Malmutes were number four. Doberman Pinchers, Chows, Great Danes, and St. Bernards all fell into that category. And every single one of those dogs I have dealt with, and I've dealt with aggressive cases of it, and all of these dogs have a protective nature about them. So you can kind of see there's a, a, a thing going on with that. So then it says, uh, it wants, it, we dive into the death, uh, dog attack fatal statistics. Uh, deaths due to canine are tragic, but they are like, but how likely is it that a dog attack will be deadly? Well, the answer is 1%. 1% of dog attacks result in a death as of 2022. Now, I mean, if you have 4.5, I'm not going to do the math because... I'm stupid, but if you have 4.5 million people getting bit every year, what's 1% of that? I don't know the answer, but I'll tell you the answer. It's too many. Any Anybody dying from a dog is too many. And I personally, not I don't personally know the people, but I have people that I know who had employees and everything else get attacked by dogs and die from it. So this is definitely something that I have I have some experience with. Thank God I've never been put in a situation, but I know people who have. Um with four, oh, well, this might actually then answer my question. It says, with 4.5 million bite instant, instances each year and and just 30 to 50 fatalities, that means fewer than 1% of bites result in death. Okay, so 30 to 50, but still, every year, 30 to 50 people die from dog attacks. And lately in the news, and whether this is an increase in these situations or it's just something the media has decided to latch onto to sort of put out there more as just a, a news thing that catches people's attention. I've been hearing more and more of like multiple dog attack fatalities, meaning it's almost like a pack of dogs, whether it be strays or whether it just be a group of dogs in the neighborhood that run together. Um, we'll be right back. Hello, this is Panic. And this is Sarah. And, and you, you are, are listening, listening to Music Elixir, a podcast between two friends discussing their favorite Asian artists and music. Ch 
children ages one to four are the most likely victims of a fatal dog attack, which makes sense for many reasons. The first reason is they're small, right? Dog bites, likelihood of hitting something fatal, a lot more likely. Also, face level. Dogs are right there in their face. Thirdly, and probably more importantly, is that kids don't know better, and they're grabbing dogs, they're grabbing them inappropriately, they're they're climbing on them, they're doing all this stuff. And this is why I advocate for people, for parents, whatever. If you see your kid acting inappropriate with your dog, stop them. Climbing on a dog isn't natural for the dog. The dog's not going to go, well, this is great. Yeah, they may tolerate it, but for how long? And are you willing to risk your dog's life, your child's life, lawsuits, all that life-changing stuff? Are you willing to risk that just so your kid can climb on your dog? I'm not, and I don't. I don't have kids, but I'm very protective of my dog around kids because I know how kids' energy is compared to adults that can lead to, uh, obviously, some problems. Um, the odds of dying from a dog bite are 1 in 53,843. Again, I don't really care. Like, it, it, that's, I mean, yeah, it, it, you, well, you have a better chance of dying by a dog bite than winning the Powerball or the Mega Millions. So, I mean, I don't know. There's that. Um, Alaska, so so this, this this part of it is basically trying to say, like, well, you probably won't die. If you If you get bit by a dog, you probably won't die. Because it's saying the odds of dying as a result of a dog bite are just 1 in 53,843. By comparison, the odds of dying in a motor vehicle accident are 1 in 93. And the odds of dying in a catastrophic storm are 1 in in 20,098. So, about 1 in 100 and 1 in 20,000. So car accident or catastrophic storm. And again, they're trying to make it go, well, it's, it's not likely to happen. But you know what? It can still happen. Shit happens. Yeah. The state that has the most fatalities is Alaska with 11.83 fatal attacks per 10 million people. Um, you know, and, and I'm not going to go into too much more of the numbers here. It, it kind of gets a little bit long. Um Children aged 5 to 9 years had the highest uh, probability of being attacked by dogs. 5 to 9, I think, this is when kids become extremely mobile, uh, high energy, twitchy. Dogs can sometimes have a problem with this. And then at that age, too, kids don't necessarily know how to properly express emotions. So if the dog gets them mad, sometimes the kids are, are more likely to act out and smack the dog, which, of course, can lead into attacks as well. And this is me. This isn't the article. This is me saying that. Um Dog attacks are the seventh leading cause of emergency room visits for children five to nine. Again, doesn't surprise me. Um, and, and, and I mean, it goes into a little bit deeper into that, but it doesn't really surprise me, right? Like, yeah, this stuff happens. Um, males are more likely to be attacked by dogs than females, probably because males are stupid. I can say that because I'm a guy. We are going to put ourselves into a situation to get bit because, A, we're trying to be brave and not look like, you know, a chicken around a girl or something like that. Or we're trying to be macho, like, yo, the dog don't scare me. Or, or like the dog, the dog growls and snarls at us. And of course, you know, we're probably more likely to be stupid and go, shut up, dog. I'm bigger than you. I'll fight you. And then you get bit and you get hurt and you're, you're in trouble. Um, <laughs> but it's not by much. But it's not by much. I will say uh, uh, 52.6% uh, of attacks involved male victims and 474 involved females. So, I mean, it's it's close to 50-50. We could call it 50-50 almost. Um, but still, you know, guys are, are slightly more stupid when it comes to dealing with dogs than females can be. Um, so, yeah, again, that doesn't really surprise me. Males are victims of 54.3% of fatal dog attacks. Again, slightly more, but again, 50-50. I'm going to call that 50-50. Anytime it's like 54, 47, 40, you know, like anytime it's like the high 40s, low 50s, when you're comparing stuff like that, I basically just say, well, it, it, it could shift between any year could shift one way or another. So I call it 50, 50, basically unneutered male dogs are 2.6 times more likely to bite people than neutered dogs. Well, yeah, because you're dealing with testosterone, right? You're dealing with stuff like that. That doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, I mean, there's a reason why testosterone is important and stuff for, for dogs, for breeding, for, well, for other things, but the hormones like that are important and it does drive to being more territorial, to 
to you know having more emotions like that. So I'm not super uh, concerned about it. Here's some stuff that if you hadn't been worried about dog attacks and what it could do or anything like that, here's some statistics that might push you into making sure you're managing your dog better maybe than you are now. The average payout to a dog bite claim is 64555 $64,555 for a, an average payout in a dog bite claim. Now, yeah, that might go against your homeowner's insurance. Maybe it'll be a personal lawsuit. I honestly am not a lawyer, have no clue. Um, but the damage it can cause, you not being able to work, getting bit in the hands. Well, if you work with your hands and you get your hands chewed up, I've been bit in the hands plenty of times. Your fingers will swell up and be very sore for a long time. So if you do typing, if you do electrical work, if you do things with your hands for work, this could definitely be a problem. Number of claims in 2022 was 17,597. Dog bite incidents are a common cause of homeowner's insurance claims. So they do go after your homeowner's insurance typically, which isn't a surprise. Um, Dog-related injury, dog related injury claims cost over $1 billion. With a B billion in 2022, the large number of annual claims and the substantial payouts make dog-related injuries a significant expense for homeowners insurance. So this is why, I know people bitch about it, but this is why insurances might put bans on certain breeds. Do I support that? No, not necessarily, but I completely understand where they're coming from. Why they want to say, you know what, when you're living in an apartment, no, I don't want a pit bull. Not because they're all bad, but because statistically they are more likely to hurt somebody than another dog. And yes, I can throw out a gazillion examples of little yip yap dog chihuahua that chews on everybody's hands. The problem is, is that the bigger the dog is, the bigger the bite is, right? And it's going to cause more damage. Getting bit by a chihuahua is not the same. They might be crazy little mental things, but it's not the same. So, you know, I don't blame insurance companies for saying, look, if you own this breed, either you're going to have to pay more. If you own this list of breeds, you're going to have to pay more or you can't have that dog. Like, I don't like it necessarily, but I don't, I understand it. I can completely understand it. Uh, let's see. It's going over the years of, of the amounts of money, total value of claims and everything. Um, holy crap. So I'm going to give you, the start of this, and I'm going to give you the end of it. So in 2013, the number of dog attack claims, 7,359. This is something I think we're talking about, 7,359. Total value of claims, so this is how much money was paid out, was 483700000 Okay, so we'll just call it $483 million. Okay, that's a lot of money, but... Scroll all the way forward to 2022, 17,597 claims. So over double, well over double, uh, resulting in $1.13 billion, billion dollars. So what's changed? What has changed there? I don't, I, I have, there's so many things you could say. So... You could say, like I mentioned before, the lack of respect towards dogs. People are treating them more like humans, and the way they're interacting with them is more uncomfortable to a typical dog interaction, and so dogs are more likely to bite. You can say uh, people living in apartments might be getting more dogs than normal, so now these dogs are not only maybe not getting as much exercise as they should, but they're also around people a lot more, and if a dog has an issue around people a lot more, something could definitely happen. Um there's a whole lot of things. Lack of education could be, could be, you know, but it's saying, you know, you look at the numbers. Why are these claims? It could be something as simple as because people can, right? Like, yeah, you could sue homeowners insurance. It's like 2013, well before that, people became sue happy. So it's not like all of a sudden people are just suing more. I feel like that's just something that's been going on for a long time. But what has changed? What do you guys think has changed? Because I honestly, I don't think they're going to give me a, a, any information about like what's changed. Um, there's, there's, so here's a debate, and this is going to be a very uh, hot, hot uh, topic, or a, a, I'm going to push somebody's button here. I'm going to trigger somebody, and they're going to get mad at me, and that's okay. From 2013 to 
2022, more training has leaned more towards purely positive than using corrective. So is there using punishment stuff? So is there, could, could we say maybe it's the lack of good control based off of the fact that you're not maybe correcting your dog like you should? Maybe, maybe. I, I, I mean, again, I don't know. But it's almost like if you're looking at this and you take away the fact that maybe people are becoming more Sue happy, which I don't think from 13 to 22, that has changed a whole lot. This means that dog attacks maybe are getting more severe than they used to be, which means dogs are being potentially more emboldened to do it, feeling like they can do it, not having the control to be stopped maybe as much as they used to. Well, could training philosophy be causing that? You might be listening to this and you might be screaming at your car radio, your computer, wherever you're listening to me from. And thank you for doing that. You might be screaming at me right now going, you're fucking stupid. That is not correct. It's not even close. But what if it is? But we don't know for sure. Unless I scroll here and they start giving me more, more statistics. It's just a question I have. Could training philosophy be leading to more dangerous bites? Numbers are going down which is good, but the severity of them seems to be climbing. Why? Why is that happening? Uh, The lead states for dog instances instances, seem, I should have picked a topic that didn't have instances as common as it is, because apparently I just can't say that word. Um, The top 10 states where the highest number of claims were made, California's number one, Florida, Texas, New York, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, New Jersey, Georgia. Okay, so you look at these things and you can say these are extremely high population states. Like, I, I think that's probably why. I, I'm not going to look at this and be like, well, California, well, blah, 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 that's why they're getting bites there. But because, you, you know, I think it's high population states. Well, more people means more dogs. More people and dogs probably means more biting. You know, if, if, if something came out and said, hey, South Dakota has the highest dog bites, I'd be like, what the hell's happening in South Dakota? They've got 800,000, I think that's right, 800,000 residents or whatever, you know, what's happening, right? But these are very high populous number uh, uh, states, so it doesn't really surprise me. Um, anyways, that is that is it for, for that article. I'm going to put the article, a link to that article in the description here. Uh, so you guys can check it out yourself. It, it goes more in depth. I just kind of skimmed over it. But what do you think? Like, whether you comment on this or you don't, I don't, it, it's fine. Um, what do you think about this? What do you think is causing this? Why do you think pit bulls are kind of leading the way when it comes to statistical attacks? You know, I read an article that was not the same one, but it showed, it showed it. And it was like 66% of attacks of dangerous or or, or 66% of fatal attacks. I think in 2023 were fatal attacks were from pit bulls. Like, why is this stuff happening? Um, is it because the pop the popularity of pit bulls increased? So maybe you could just say it's a numbers game. Is there something about the breeds? Is it something about training philosophies like I mentioned before? Like what do you think is leading to more severe attacks increasing but overall bite attacks decreasing? It's a good question. I always – I'm going to try when I read these articles and I kind of do these read and reacts with you. I'm going to try to leave you with questions because I feel like one article shouldn't – turn shouldn't make you believe one thing or another do your research like read into this a little bit more you can you can take my word for it if you'd like and i'm fine i i try to be as honest as i possibly can as you can see i ask a lot of questions and this article answered a lot of questions but it also created a bunch of new ones and i think that's okay it causes us to dig deeper and the more digging deeper we do on whatever it is in life but like for me if i have questions about dog training i'll dig a little deeper and what that does expands your knowledge the more knowledge we have the more educated we are the better we're going to be and so make sure if you have any questions about this stuff guys you can certainly reach out to me you can send me a a a message on social media you could you can uh, comment you can do whatever ask questions i'm here to answer and help and hopefully i can answer your question if not well I'll, i'll create about four more questions for you um in the meantime like i did with this But what do you guys think about this article? Let me know uh, what you guys think. But guys, that's going to be it for this week's episode. Hopefully it was good. Hopefully it was uh, a little 
it was educational, but hopefully it just kind of made you go, wow, and just kind of sit back and, and really digest these numbers and these statistics and kind of think about this. If you're looking at getting a new breed or getting a certain type of dog, like, well, you know, maybe I need to check with our insurance, what breeds are going to be covered, what breeds aren't. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening this week. You can check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Um, we're all over those. You just got to search for On Dog Training Academy. You can also visit our website, ondogtrainingacademy.com, where we have free webinars and we have uh, our course, Welcome Home. So if you're looking to not be one of these statistics, uh, if you're looking to not be a number, check out our course, Welcome Home. I think it's a really good, helpful tool to give you that head start you need when you get first get that puppy uh, in your home and it just sets you up for success. So check that out guys. But anyways, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully this was helpful and guys, like always, we'll see you next week. Good dog.